In section 3 of chapter 9, we are again going to be dealing with inverses, except this time we're going to be focusing on the graphing side of it. We just learned how to prove that two functions are inverses by taking their composite and proving that they equal to x. Now I'm going to show you how to prove that two functions are inverses just by looking at their graphs. So first, I have these functions right here. I'm just going to do a relatively quick and simple graphing job. So problem number one, f has a y-intercept at 3 and a slope of 1 half, which is up 1, right 2, up 1, right 2, up 1, right 2, up 1, right 2, down 1, left 2, down 1, left 2, down 1, left 2, down 1, left 2. This is what the graph of the function f looks like. Now I'm going to do the same thing with function f inverse. So I'm telling you right now, because I'm using that notation, the graph I'm about to do is the inverse. What I'm hoping you will reflect on is, knowing that these two graphs are going to be inverses, what characteristics do the graphs have so that you can learn to just look at a graph and say, yeah, that function and that function are in fact inverses. I can tell just by looking at it. So for function f inverse, the slope, or sorry, the y-intercept is negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Slope is 2, so up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1. Up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1, down 2, left 1. And it'll look something like this. Now, finding the patterns for linear functions is a little tricky because there's not a whole lot of information to go off of, but I wanted to show you a linear function because it's a little bit easier to graph. But these two lines, this graph as a whole, has some very important key characteristics. Maybe start asking yourself, what makes this graph unique? What makes this interesting? I'm going to graph the next two functions that I have in green. I'm going to graph the function g and g inverse. So for the function g, I'm going to go left 1 and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The pattern is right 1, up 1, back to the vertex, right 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4, back to the vertex, right 3, up 9. Duplicate those coordinates on the left. And then this is what the function g looks like graphically. Now for the function, or sorry, for g inverse, I'm actually not concerned about a inverse function. I'm just finding the inverse. That's why you see a plus or minus there. But it is going to be shifted left, one, two, three, four, five, and down one. And it will have down one, right one, down one, right two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. These are the coordinates for the function g inverse. What you should be asking yourself is what characteristics do these pairs of functions have with one another and what characteristics does the system of equations as a graph have as a whole? They are mirrored over the line y equals x. They have a type of symmetry. <coughs> that was a little off because I messed up on some of my coordinates. There we go. Wondering why purple looked a little off. One, two, three, four, five, there we go. Now it looks a little bit better. Here's another thing that you might notice. If I pick a random coordinate on one of the functions, it doesn't matter which, I'm going to do the parabolas because it seems to be more revealing. If I do a random coordinate like this one right here. Wait, what? No, I'm going to pick a different one. I'm going to pick this coordinate right here. This coordinate is right 4 up 2. It's 4 comma 2. It has a partner coordinate on the green function right here. That coordinate is... 2 comma 4. 4 comma 2, 2 comma 4. This one is negative 5 comma negative 1. Its partner is negative 1 comma negative 5. All you're doing is taking the x and y values and swapping them for their inverse. 
Another way of writing that <clears throat> is you're taking the x and the y and you're swapping them. That is to say, x is equal to y and y is equal to x. And what do you know? If you graph the equation y equals x, that's this black line that shows the symmetry. So if you were asked to determine if two functions are inverses or not, simply by looking at their graph, you can do two things. You can draw that line and show that it's the same on the left and the right, or analyze individual coordinates and check to see if their partner coordinate is a swap of the x and y value. And that's actually what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna give you a bunch of graphs. You need to, at a glance, look at it and tell me if they're inverses or not. The way that I like to do it is with the line y equals x. So what I do is I draw the line y equals x, and I ask myself, does it look the same on the left and right side of that line? For this one, the answer is yes. Draw the line y equals x. Does it look the same on the left and the right? Yes. Draw the line y equals x. Does it look the same on the right and the left? No. y equals x? Yes. y equals x? No. y equals x? Yes. If you're having a hard time imagining it, another thing that you can do, which is something I usually like to do, is if you manipulate the pictures such that the line is pointing straight at you, they should look the same on the left and right side, like a butterfly. There should be a form of symmetry. All you gotta do is take the paper, rotate it about 45 degrees where the corner of the graph is pointing at you, should look the same on the left and right side. If it does, they are inverses. If it does not, they are not inverses. It's as simple as that. The last thing I'm gonna do is kind of a combination of this lesson and last. I am going to give you a function. I'm gonna ask for you to derive the inverse of that function using that chain that we just did. And then, utilizing Desmos, I want you to graph both of them to verify that the inverse you calculated is in fact the inverse because the graphs look like they're symmetric across the line y equals x. So if you have access to a graphing calculator Desmos, this is a tool to verify you finding inverses if you were right or wrong. Because some students go like, oh, I did the process. I don't know if I'm right or not. This is a way to verify. So for problem number one that I have up here, I have the function f. I would do the inverse operations in the inverse order. So the first thing I'd do is I would subtract 1. After that, we cube it. After that, we multiply by negative 2. Then we add 5, which means to find the inverse, I'm going to do the inverse operations in the inverse order. Subtract 5 divide by negative 2, cube root, and then add 1. Therefore, f inverse is going to start with an x that I'm going to first subtract 5 from, then we're going to divide by negative 2, then we're going to take all of that and cube root it, and then we're going to take all of that and add 1, this is my inverse function, but if I was paranoid and go like, I don't know if I got the right answer, Mrs. Silva, I need a way of verifying it. Plug f inverse and the function f into Desmos. You'll get a graph, which I sadly didn't have ready. You'll get the graph. If those two look symmetric across that line y equals x, then yeah, they're inverses. Yes, you did it correctly. If your two lines or your two functions don't look like they're symmetric, you made a mistake somewhere in here. You missed a step. You did an inverse operation incorrectly. It's a way for you to verify. Oh, yeah, okay.